Well, welcome back, everybody, to Twin Spires, Darren Zocali and Scott Shapiro, as we are on the road to Louisville. The Kentucky Derby is less than three months away. It's hard to believe we're saying that. We're certainly excited for a more fully impactful derby with everybody back at Churchill Downs. But on the road to the derby, we've got to analyze some races, Scott. And this weekend, we've got a good one. It's the grade two Rebel Snakes for $1 million. Quite a lofty purse there. A big field. These uh, prep races have been ultra competitive with deep and competitive fields. This race is an interesting race from a pace standpoint, Scott. Kavid, who has been on the lead last time out in the Southwest from post position number four, draws the rail here after another relatively decent effort. But you have to think from this inside starting slot, he's got to go and head out right to the front. Yeah, I would expect Kavad to be aggressively sent from the gate by jockey Francisco Arietta after that speed and fade to fourth place effort in the grade three Southwest, Darren. But I think, you know, at first when I looked at this race, I wasn't sure if the pace would be contentious. But the more I dove in, I think it will be because of the horses, the way they're drawn, and some of it's circumstantial. I think Kavad will have to go. New Grange, who was outside the favorite uh, in the Southwest, they won going away, uh, winning by a length and a half as the three to two top choice, had an outside stalking trip. Now he draws inside. I'm not sure if he's one that's going to be able to relax. Maybe he'll be able to find the pocket. But then there's a couple other horses that I think will be involved early. Chasing Time, who I know you're high on as well as myself. And then Stellar Tap and Ben Diesel both tried different tactics last time out. Not sure they're the kind of horse that wants to pass horses and relax. So I think there's the potential of some new tactics. So I'm going to be hopeful that this pace is a little more contentious than maybe others will suggest. And maybe some of those pace projectors are projecting. And obviously coming out of the Southwest stakes, we look back to that race to try to get an idea of what we're going to see in the Rebel because the top five finishers are all returning for this race. That race left me rather perplexed. And it left me perplexed because the winner and the favorite and the favorite and the Rebel Newgrange at multiple points of that race, I thought was finished. Looked like he was under a drive, five furlongs out, a half mile out, three furlongs out. And the horse just sort of rebroke in the stretch and won a race that I was not expecting him to win. And then you had a horse like Ben Diesel, who I thought had a great setup. And I really didn't think had much of an excuse. Maybe coming up the inside isn't what he wanted to do, but he had a great trip and didn't really fire. And it left me rather perplexed as to what to make of the Southwest and how it affects the pace scenario today. I'm totally with you as someone that was against New Grange in that spot multiple times spreading against. I thought I was a home run to beat the horse and the re-rally was Sort of impressive, but to me, it said a little bit more like you uh, about the horses that he competed against and being a little bit underwhelmed by them. Now, Ben Diesel did come up along the inside that day, when, a day when the outside was better, but I'm still not sure if he's the kind of horse that wants to pass horses, especially on the inside, as I mentioned, might get a little bit more of an aggressive ride. But like you, I'm going to fade the horses out of that race and hope that a new shooter can get the job done. Maybe a new shooter for a guy that's a bit old hat. Number 10, Ethereal Road. Dwayne Lucas off a maiden win. He's got a horse that's on the road to the Oaks that we talked about in another video. How about this horse? You have a big shot. Yeah. I mean, he's my top pick. I'm not uh, a little surprised that I landed on the coach. No disrespect to one of the all time greats in both uh, prep races in hot springs this week, but I was extremely impressed with both of his last two efforts, Darren two back in his maiden event over the mud. He raced against the flow that day. The top two finishers in there ran, basically ran one, two around the racetrack. He was the much the best of the closers that day. And then last time out on January 29th, he had an absolutely terrible start from an inside draw. Looked like he had really no shot after that. And not only did he rally, but he rallied very impressively. So horse that can finish at two turns and I'm hopeful that he'll get the right pace set up. As I mentioned earlier with the probable horses that could be sent from the gate. So at 12 to one on the line, I think ethereal well worth the gamble. How about you? I went back and forth between three different horses, chasing time, Barber road and ethereal road. I went, went away from Barber road because I just was not impressed with how the Southwest stakes finished. And I thought maybe the way he was finishing was kind of amplified and maybe looked a little bit better than it actually was, which you just spoke about ethereal road. I thought made tremendous strides and huge progress from his start two back to his recent maiden win. And I had concerns, can he make another big jump forward off that performance? So I went to chasing time, a horse that has a little bit more tactical speed. He can lay close and win, but he can also rate. I mean, he has a race three starts back where he was pretty, not pretty far back, but four lanes back at the half mile pole, going seven furlongs at Churchill Downs, picked up the horses and rolled home late. And then last time stalked right on the pace and then drew clear in the stretch. I think this is a horse with a lot of versatility and a lot of talent. And in derby preps, that's a combination you want to have. 
Yeah, I'm very high on chasing time in general. I'm a little concerned that he'll get caught up here, but he does draw favorably outside the other speeds. And you mentioned it. He was able to relax a little bit in a couple of his starts, including last time out when he broke on top, but then a long shot leader made a brush brush a little bit of a harness racing term for you uh your background Darren but he made a backside brush and took the lead and uh Joel Rosario had no problems relaxing this one taking him off the rail and getting him into a stalking spot now if they go at it early it'll be interesting to see if Tyler Gaffleon can sit a couple of lengths off of it to kind of save some stamina for that mile on his 16th has never been further than a mile but I do think chasing time has a lot of ability and could put forth his career best effort on Saturday last thing on chasing time I wanted to ask you about Sixth race, six different rider. You would think a horse with his talent, at some point a rider would have said to Steve Asmussen, hey, I want to ride this horse wherever he goes. What do you make of the fact that this is a six different jockey in six starts? Well, I think some of it's circumstantial, especially this time. Joel Rosario going to be out at, uh, so it's, uh, it, for the Saudi Cup competing there. So he probably would have ridden this horse. But it is interesting, especially the riders early on in his career, not necessarily some of the guys you see Steve Asmussen use on his best horses or in general, Julian Le Peru, Rafael Bayerano, to name a couple. Brian Hernandez on, on debut, not surprising. And obviously Ricardo Santana and Joel. But never ideal to have different riders. But if you're going to get someone to come in fresh, Tyler Gaffley on one of the top guys that would be on my list. It sounds like we're on a lot of the similar horses here. It's chasing time for me. I'm definitely using your horse, Ethereal Road for you. It sounds like you're definitely using my horse. Let's hope we cash some tickets together. Let's hope that you are involved in the Twin Spires leaderboard contest, the Road to the Kentucky Derby. Remember, all of these races that these horses earn points on the Road to the Derby, if you make a win bet on them of, of, of more than $10, these horses will give you points on the Road to the Derby as well, and you climb that leaderboard with each and every start. Remember, only horses that are eligible to earn points will be able to get you points in the contest, so make sure you go to TwinSpires.com and opt in. We'll see you back all season long on the road to the Kentucky Derby for Scott Shapiro. This is Darren Zocali. Thanks so much for joining us at Twin Spires and best of luck in the Rebel.